you can't spend more than you are without getting into debt. And if you have debt, you have to pay back the debt. The only difference is you can print the money. And so the question is, what ends that or is there no end to that? Did you know that just a handful of the world's wealthiest individuals hold more wealth than the entire bottom half of the global population? It's a staggering fact that paints a vivid picture of the growing wealth divide. But what if I told you that there's a strategy, a blueprint if you will, that one of the world's foremost financial minds believes can rewrite this story? Through this strategy, will you be able to seize the reins of your financial future? Will you be a player or a spectator in the game changing the world's wealth map? Well, let's delve deep into the mind of Ray Dalio, the legendary Bridgewater Associates investor and founder, as he reveals a wealth transfer strategy that could reshape the financial landscape. In order to create this big transfer of wealth that there needed to be in various ways, uh, the government borrowed a lot of money because they spent a lot more than they earned and they sell a lot of bonds. And then the Federal Reserve buys bonds and it subsidizes those bonds. And so the big losers of this cycle has not been the individual balance sheets because the individual balance sheets have been improved. It is the fact that those who are ho holding government debt are the ones that are having the losses. In a recent exploration, Dalio took the center stage, shedding light on the extraordinary shifts in wealth distribution and the subsequent ripple effects on monetary and financial policies. The second quarter unfolded like a captivating narrative. Growth surpassed analysts' predictions, inflation accelerated, and unemployment maintained. The enigma of why the economy persists in its resilience becomes the focal point, a question to which veteran investor Ray Dalio brings a compelling answer. In a sprawling LinkedIn post, he introduces what he terms the great wealth transfer. In this financial drama, picture a grand government-directed ballet orchestrating a substantial shift in wealth from the public sector and government bondholders to the awaiting hands of the private sector, households and businesses. Dalio's narrative unfolds like a well-crafted story, revealing how this coordinated government maneuver renders the private sector resilient to the Federal Reserve's rapid tightening of monetary policy. The result? Household balance sheets flourish while the government's financial health sinks. In simpler terms, the central government plunges into a sea of debt, and central banks unleash a torrent of money printing, causing balance sheets to crumble and inflation to ascend, paradoxically benefiting the private sector. Despite the Federal Reserve's tightening causing ripples in bonds, stocks, and even commercial real estate, the private sector emerges unscathed and thriving. According to Dalio, net worth is soaring, and unemployment is taking a graceful bow. Yet. Amidst this financial theater of triumphs and tribulations, Dalio doesn't mince words when sounding a clarion call to the U.S. government regarding their escalating debt levels. His words echo like a sober refrain. Does it matter that central governments and central banks have such dire balance sheets if the real economy is in reasonably good shape? Of course, it does. Governments, much like individuals and companies, face the painful reality of debt service payments and the eventual repayment of principal. In a rhetorical flourish, Dalio highlights the differences in their financial playbooks. Governments possess the ability to confiscate wealth through taxes and print money via the central bank. The financial soothsayer Dalio foresees a future where rising interest payments propel the government into a self-imposed debt spiral. It's a script familiar to him, as he declared at a Bloomberg conference in June, in my opinion, we are at the beginning of a very classic late, big cycle debt crisis. The echoes of this warning resonate as he likens American policymakers' handling of the debt ceiling crisis to a bunch of alcoholics who write laws to enforce drinking limits. So now, the stage is set, the plot thickens, and the narrative unfolds. Ray Dalio's warning rings loud, urging us to act before the curtains close on this economic saga. Now. Brace yourself for the imminent wave of generational wealth transfer, an unprecedented tide set to become the largest in history. Millennials' $73 trillion windfall. Ray Dalio illustrates why this financial shift is a double-edged sword, bringing prosperity to American households but spelling trouble for the federal government, potentially entwined with a looming historic downgrade. An estimated $73 trillion is poised to traverse from aging baby boomers to their heirs, mainly millennials. 
This immense wealth transfer is, in part, a strategic orchestration by the government, as per insights from Bridgewater Associates founder Dalio. The baby boomer generation, born between 1946 and 1964, is reaching the twilight of its years. The youngest boomers are now in their early 60s, while the eldest are approaching their 80s. The roots of their wealth trace back to the flourishing financial and housing markets since the early 1980s, when they were in their prime, acquiring their first homes and venturing into significant investments. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis Economic Database, the average U.S. house price has surged nearly 500% since 1983. Simultaneously, the stock market has witnessed phenomenal growth, with the S&P 500 index skyrocketing over 2,800% since the start of 1983, coinciding with the surge in popularity of index funds among middle-class Americans, as reported by the New York Times. As the boomer generation makes its inevitable exit, a colossal wealth transfer is set in motion, projecting to amass nearly $85 trillion, an unparalleled sum surpassing all previous transfers. Millennials, the heirs of the boomers, are poised to be the primary beneficiaries, with an estimated $73 trillion anticipated to be passed down by 2045. An additional $12 trillion is earmarked for charitable causes. In stark contrast, the greatest generation, born between 1900 and 1925, and veterans of World War II, passed down a comparatively modest $16 trillion to their boomer offspring. While Dalio doesn't explicitly mention boomers in his LinkedIn newsletter, he alludes to a concept he calls a big squeeze, indicating the diminishing benefits of recent loose fiscal policies. The impact is expected to resonate profoundly among older households as they exit the workforce, relying on retirement benefits like Social Security and Medicare. Dalio, expressing concerns dating back to at least 2016, highlights the unsustainable nature of many of these promises, emphasizing that retirees anticipate substantial benefits without active work creating a scenario where everyone expects significant spending power without producing anything. Dalio's recent newsletter posits that the government is shouldering an increasing burden encapsulated in what he terms as the big squeeze. The pressing question arises, how much weight can the government bear? Dalio acknowledges that, for the time being, it has maintained the economy in good shape. However, his writings raise a pivotal question. How sustainable is this precarious equilibrium? Well, the narrative unfolds with uncertainty, prompting contemplation on the endurance of the government's resilience and the lasting impact of this monumental wealth transfer on the nation's economic landscape. Monetary policy three is when there needs to be a redistribution of wealth. And the way that works is that only the federal government can determine where the money goes. Get, the federal government gets to determine how much I tax and where I distribute it. And the central bank gets to determine how much there is of it, or how much money there is of it. And so when the central bank works together with the central government, to direct money to give it to others in that way, which increasingly then bypasses investors to some extent and gets money into the checks that we send money around right. to, to be able. And so we're in monetary policy three. Now, when tough times hit, people, businesses, and even governments have a common playbook. They start tightening their belts and cutting their spending. A little scarcity, if you will. Now, it's not a walk in the park. This spending cutdown can be deflationary and downright painful. Businesses are forced to trim costs, often leading to fewer job opportunities and higher unemployment rates. It's a tough pill to swallow. So, here's the deal. With many countries grappling with mounting debt and those pesky higher interest rates, it's like a fast track to a debt disaster, just as Ray Dalio pointed out. When you slash spending across the board, it usually spells bad news for the citizens, resulting in lower incomes and, you guessed it, higher unemployment. It's a rocky road. And then, debts must be reduced. When borrowers find themselves drowning in loans, it sends shockwaves through the financial world. After all, a borrower's debts are a lender's prized assets. When borrowers can't keep up, panic ensues. People rush to withdraw their hard-earned cash from banks, and banks find themselves in a tight spot. Defaulting on debts becomes a harsh reality for many. To avoid total collapse, lenders often agree to debt restructuring. Sounds fancy, right? It's like rewriting the rules. They get paid back less, over a longer time frame, 
or at a lower interest rate than initially agreed upon. It's all about preserving some value rather than losing it all. The catch here is that while debts may shrink, the process often causes incomes and asset values to vanish at warp speed, making the debt burden even more unbearable. Now, let's shift the spotlight to the central government. Lower incomes and a surge in unemployment mean one thing, less money flowing into the government's coffers. But here's the tricky part. They need to spend more to support those struggling due to job losses. It's a classic catch-22. And what's brewing here? Budget shortages. You've heard it on the news. Governments are spending more than they're raking in from taxes. Governments have two options to bridge the budget gap, raise taxes or borrow money. But there's a twist. With incomes taking a nosedive and many folks out of work, guess who ends up footing the bill? The wealthier guys in the room. It's all about wealth redistribution, a key element in this grand deleveraging scheme. The goal, balancing the government's books and narrowing the wealth gap. But be warned, this step also has a deflationary impact. Something else is on printing money. The central bank takes center stage, bringing fresh cash out of thin air. But hold your horses. It's not a free-for-all. They use this newfound money to purchase financial assets and government bonds. In other words, they're expanding their portfolio. But there's a catch. They can't buy real goods and services. That's where the central government comes into play. They can use their funds to buy stuff and directly put money in people's hands. But here's the kicker. They can't print money. To work their magic, these two powerhouses need to collaborate. When the central bank buys government bonds, it's like giving the government a helping hand to finance their spending endeavors. Think stimulus programs, unemployment benefits, and the like. It boosts people's incomes and racks up government debt, but at the same time, it brings down the overall debt burden in the economy. But here's where it gets dicey. It's a risky game. Policymakers must struggle to find the sweet spot between deflation and inflation. If they strike that balance, it's a beautiful deleveraging act. But if they slip up, it could be curtains. Now, let's talk about the good old US of A. They've been printing money like it's going out of style, and guess what? It has come back to bite them in the form of high inflation. Now, Uncle Sam is at a crossroads. They must reduce spending and crank up those taxes to avoid a debt disaster. So now, as we wrap up, will you take proactive steps to secure your financial future, or will you simply watch as the world evolves around you? Comment down below. We'd love to know. Thanks for tuning in to After the 925. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on financial freedom, smart investments, and profitable side hustles.